You will break out my inner Kentucky here. Are you all about ready to roll this thing? <laughs> yes. Very good. Um, Ms. Wilson, why don't you go find our jury, please? Would you like the record on first? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. My name is uh, Chris Pagan. I don't think you, I represent the defendant, and I don't think we've ever met. I don't think so either. Okay. Um, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you State 40, which is the opinion letter. Okay. And I'll be asking you some questions about that. So you can, I have a copy, so you can hang on to that. And then the next question is this. State 39 are your notes. Yes. Okay. And you've testified from them? Yes. Okay. And they begin at 151 and end at 155, correct? I mean, yes, that means nothing to me because of the way they're printed out, but yes, I think that is correct. Yes. So there are four pages here. Right. You said you uh, reviewed all the children's hospital medical records in the case. Yes. Okay. And we can agree there's somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 pages. Probably at least, yes. And again, the way you get it is different than how I see it. So every vital sign, every short note is probably a page. So that sounds about right. Okay. Yes. Well, you, you reviewed it, so you know. But the you way look at it I look at it differently, it. yes, right. right. But in any event, um, I have these four pages that you brought. Yes. Okay. And last night I went through those 5,000 pages and, I've, and the only notation that I could find would be these four pages. Of, of mine. Of yours. Yes, correct. Okay. So of the, of the 45, 5,000 pages, 4,500 to 5,000 pages, this is what you got. Yes, and again, just to point out, the way that medical records are going to print out for you um, is every vital sign could be on a separate page. So it doesn't mean that there are 5,000 pages of notes like mine, um, but I'm sure there are many notes in there. Um, but every single page of the way it prints out, it could be, you know, a little notation. Could be a medication given, could be a, a blood pressure. But you, you didn't see my documents. You mean the way it prints out by? Correct. Yes, so correct. So you're guessing about the way it looked to me, because you looked at it differently. Um, I have seen the printout. Um, I have seen what the printout looks like in other patients, and I've noted that sometimes it's just sort of, you know, one thing on one page, turn the page, there's sort of another number on another page. So your experience with other patients in other cases leads you to suspect and make a guess that what I saw is what you described. Yes. Okay. But you haven't seen the 4,500 to 5,000 pages of documents in this particular case because you looked at the electronic medical records at work. Yes, I'd be happy to, though, if you'd like me to. What's that? I, I said I'd be happy to look at those if you'd like me to. The, the, the 5,000 pages. No I, no, I just want to, I mean, there's four pages here, there's 5,000 pages in the record, and there's no other, in, it took me a long time, as you can imagine, to go through 5,000 pages. Yes. And this is what I found with your name on it, yes. just the four pages you brought to court. Correct. There's nothing else out there. Right. Okay. And it depicted uh, a visit and an exam that occurred on March the 8th. Correct. All right. And she was at the hospital for longer than March the 8th. Uh, she was there for about 10 days, yes. Right. And, and, and so you had one singular visit on March the 8th? Uh, correct, yes. Okay. Stage 91 is the... You don't need to look at them, I'm just going to flash them to you. Forest Hills Pediatrics Records, correct? Yes. yes. Forest Hills provided the general pediatric care to Hannah during her life. Correct. 
Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, but those records aren't part of the electronic medical records that are connected to Children's Hospital. No, I don't think they are. Some met, some are. I don't think forced tills are. I can't remember uh, when I reviewed what was printed by me and what was printed and, and given to me, but I'm pretty sure forced tills pediatrics does not. All right. If, if, if I submitted to you that not one of these records contained in State 91, again, which is forced tills pediatrics, is contained or duplicated in State's Exhibit 8, which is the Children's Hospital Medical Records, you're not going to push back on that? Correct. And I gave you a copy of your report. Yes. And you have it in front of you. Yes. Please tell me what state exhibit number it is. 40. Okay. Uh, nowhere in state exhibit 40, which again is your letter to the prosecutor on December the 14th, 2018, is there a mention of the Forest Hills pediatric records? No, there is not. All right. And it's not part of your note if you want to look. Yes, I know it's not part of my note, okay. correct. It's not part of your note. In fact, from the letter, or the emails, or the Children's Hospital records, the Fort Hamilton records, or the EMS records, there's no documentation at any point when the Forest Hills records were reviewed by anyone, including you. Um, yes, I mean, I can say that for me, yes, that's okay. correct. Right. So, you just got these? I, I got them at some point, yes. Okay. Well, it must have been pretty recently because we were emailing right around the turn of the year and there's no mention of this stuff. Uh, oh, it's definitely been since the turn of the year, yes. Okay. Well, I'm just going to ask you, when? I don't remember exactly when, whether it was sometime in February or March that I got those. Okay. Probably Mar sometime in March. March of 2019. Of 2019, okay. yes. We're here on April the 1. It's been, we've been a, it's been a long trial, I don't know the date. April the 4th? 5th? 5th. I can look at my watch. It's the 5th. Yes. So recently? Yes. All right. Um, so you must have had a call with the prosecutor in the case? Yes. Okay. And then you discussed these medical records? Yes. And there ha it hadn't been part of any of the notations, records, opinion letters, emails, none of that before? Um, not directly the records, but her past medical history, yes. Okay. And why did you have this conversation? About the medical records? About these new medical records. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're asking. What did you talk about? Um, just that they existed. Okay. And... Did the prosecutor suggest to you a reason why she wanted you to look at these? Just because it's part of her medical record. All right. Any other reason offered? Um, you know, just to review, uh, to be complete. Okay. I'm looking at State 91, and I see some initials down at the bottom. D something D, right? Yes. Do you know Dorothy Dean, the pathologist in the case? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Do you recognize her initials in, in writing? I, I, I wouldn't recognize her writing, okay. but if you tell me it is, then I don't know. initials. Okay. Oh, I don't know. It says March the 14th, 2019. Okay. Okay. Did you do that? Did you, were you asked to identify States 91, Forest Hills Pediatrics, by putting your initials on the records? Uh, no, I did not do okay. that. All right. Well, after, after you looked at this, the Forest Hills Pediatric Records, did you call the prosecutor or anybody from the state to talk about it? Um, I mean, we talked about it in preparation for the case, yes. In the last couple of weeks? Probably, yes. Okay. Um, but it didn't result in any amended opinion letter from you? Correct. Okay. And do you, sometimes I come here to ask questions, and I hope it's not an invasion. Oh, not Are at we all. good? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. So there was nothing in States 91 that you saw that... Um, required you to change your, your your opinion letter. Correct. That you have right in front of you. Yes, that's correct. And you see these 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 records as providing a clean bill of health. Um, well, I wouldn't say a clean bill of health, but I would say that there was nothing uh, in those records um, that certainly changed any of my opinions or any of my diagnoses. Right. And we'll get to that a little later. I just wanted to clear up how this came to be. 
So maybe the best way to, to manage this would be to go through your opinion letter that you have. Sure. And um, I've already forgotten what state. Oh, 40. State Exhibit 4. So we'll just outline it for the jury, and then we'll go, then we'll delve into it. Okay. Right? Okay. And uh, if I ask an unclear question, just please let me know. Absolutely. Okay. I count one, two, three, four, five distinct paragraphs. Um, six. Please I would contact say, me. I didn't call. I yes, didn't. I still think there's six. One, two, three. No, no, you're right. Four, because right, it goes on to the next page. So yes, five distinct paragraphs. Yes. Okay. And and the first paragraph deals with your statement about the March eighth, twenty eighteen visit and examination that you personally had with Hannah. Correct. The second paragraph deals with the history provided to you. Yes. And if you need time to look at it, it's not a gotcha game. I, I want you to take some Yes, yeah, no, right. uh, no, this is a fine pace, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, the third paragraph uh, dealt with the exam itself and your findings from the exam. Um, yes, I would just add there are also findings, um, not of my exam, but uh, quoted from the electronic medical record of right, like, retinal hemorrhages yes. and also of the CAT scan findings, right. yes. We'll get into that, but, but yes, we agree with that. The fourth paragraph um, deals with the history about the fall off the toy train and your opinion with respect to timing. I'm just going to read through this. Um, you take your time. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then the f what I would call the fifth paragraph is your diagnosis. Correct. And then uh, please contact me if you want in your signature. And then just to add with the diagnosis, all of the above findings within a reasonable degree of medical certainty. Right, the yes. standard that you have to have. Right. And, and, and that's, what, that's how you organize this opinion letter? Yes. Okay. And it was dated on December the 14th, 2018? Yes. The, the first paragraph of the first visit is pretty much depicted in State 39, which is your note. I'm sorry, the first paragraph you said? The first said? paragraph is, I, I saw this girl on March the 8th, 2018. Yes. And you have a note that further elaborates on that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that in a second. The second is the history, right? Yes. yes? Okay. And, and, and you said some things about history, but I want to make certain that the jury understands. So a history are statements from people that are in the know about the patient's condition. Yes. Um, yes, I mean, I think that could, I mean, you, you could certainly expand what a history yes. is, but that is one example, sure. And that's an important part of the, the evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment protocol. Absolutely. And that's why you indicated that you reviewed it and you and fellow physicians rely upon it in reaching conclusions, determining, making findings, diagnosis, prognosis, all that stuff. Yes. And you did that in this particular case. Correct. And you did it by, and you did it by evaluating the, the history that was provided in the children's medical records. Yes, to a social okay. worker. Correct. And I think you even said that the, 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 the history that was supplied in this particular case was collected by a social worker. I don't think I put it in this letter, but I do put it in my note. In I think you testified about it. I did, correct, yes. yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think the notes do indicate that it came from a particular social worker on a particular, on March the 8th? Yes, right. correct. Okay. And you said that wasn't unusual? That is correct, that is not unusual. Right. Not troubling, not concerning, that's just the course of business. Yeah, okay. yes. And to an extent, perhaps you rely on the social worker to be a good historian and scrivener, but that's the way you do it. Um, yes, that is one way to do it, certainly. No, it's, and, and it's the way y'all do it. I'm sorry? It's, it's the way you do it at Children's Hospital. Yes. Okay. Okay. I am going to hand you a history that was pulled from, I will, I will, was pulled from the Children's Hospital records and we're going to go over that. 
Okay. And so, so the record's clear. I think it's stated. The medical record yeah. is stated. So, so what I'm supplying to the witness is Defense Exhibit K, which comes from, which is a copy of one of the 5,000 pages from the state's exhibit. All right. All right. And we're going to go slow over this. And I'll have the witness identify it, and then I'm going to seek to publish it because it's part of the children's medical record. Well, let's authenticate this. So you see at the very top left, it says what? Uh, you mean top up yeah, here? Yeah, right there. So the Cincinnati Children's Emblem. Okay. And in this uh, grayed out area, it is. it indicates it's a history. Yes. Okay. And I think it even indicates the social worker who took the history. Uh, that's up here, yes. Reagan Kitsmiller. Do you, do you know Reagan? Yes. Okay. With the credentials of MSW, LSW, which stands for Masters of Social Work and something of social work. Um, licensed social worker. Licensed, thank you. Mm -hmm. And and it was taken on March the 8th, 2018 at 1231. Well, I mean, that's when she put her note in. That doesn't mean that's when she took the history, but that's when the note was entered. So, yes. some, if not 1231, sometime prior to 1231. Correct, okay. yes. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on the screen so we can go over Again, there's no dispute that this is what, what you read and relied upon in reaching some of the findings and opinion that you supplied to the jury here today. Correct. So let's, why don't we first talk about, and before I even do this, I think you even said that you understood that Dad was the primary, primary historian, Hannah's father was the primary historian in this document. Correct. That's good. This week has been a hard week of falls for patient Wallace Sims. Dad reports a few days ago, Lindsay told him the patient got a chin, chest bruising from catching her cowboy boot with a small heel on something on the gravel driveway and patient fell while running. Dad reports that patient told her she fell on the driveway but didn't say she was running. We'll stop there. So can we agree that dad is describing one of the bruises and giving an explanation for it. Yes, we can agree that dad is giving an explanation for a bruise, yes. Okay. And in fact, even Hannah is vocalizing what happened with respect to that particular incident. Well, I mean, I would say according to dad that dad, <laughs> dad reports patient told her she fell on the driveway but didn't say she was running. It doesn't specifically say um, that um, it, it doesn't specifically say that Hannah 
also told Dad that that's how she got the bruise. I'm sorry, say the last part again so I can hear you clearly. The way it is written, um, that dad that that dad reports um, that Hannah told dad that she fell on the driveway but didn't say she was running it doesn't specifically say that Hannah told dad that that's how she got the bruise no she's just it's a fair reading of this history that both dad and Hannah are confirming a fall in cowboy boots on the gravel driveway well, I don't read it that way. So if you go above, Lindsay told him patient got chest chin bruising from catching her cowboy boot with a small heel on something on the gravel driveway and patient fell while running. Dad reports patient told her, uh, told her she fell on the driveway but didn't say she was running. It, we would have to infer because it doesn't state explicitly that the child and dad were having the conversation about the bruise, but we can conclude that Lindsay and dad were having a conversation about the bruise. And we can conclude that dad and Hannah had a conversation about it and Hannah confirmed the fall. I, I could not conclude by that statement that they were having a, a that they were having a conversation about the bruise. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying the way this is written, I would not conclude that. Dad reports patient told her she fell on the drive. But didn't say anything. Another way of stating what you are inferring is dad reports that Hannah told him she got the bruise running on the driveway, falling on the driveway, but she wasn't running. In nowhere there does it say that Hannah told dad about the bruise. You are inferring that, and I'm not saying that you are wrong. I am just saying that you are inferring that yeah, the way the way it was the way it is written, which my is all we have. To you was it's clear in this history, which by the way is is received and controlled by a children's hospital social worker, correct? Correct. Who I assume is trained to take these histories in an appropriate way for physicians to rely on. I mean, it's controlled by children's hospital staff, right? But it doesn't mean that what is written there is what you are inferring. Right. And all, and all I asked you to confirm was that Hannah is vocalizing something that happened to her. Right. And I, am, and I will agree with you that according to how this is written, Hannah uh, vocalized to Dad that she fell on the driveway right. but didn't say she was running. Right. But I can't make the leap to the bruise. That's in that sentence, neither from dad or from Hannah, there is a discussion of non accidental injury. In that sentence, correct? Correct. All right. We'll move to the next sentence. Dad reports seeing a linear bruise to her bottom two nights ago when he was giving her a bath and asked patient if she got whooped. Patient said she fell on a step. Yes? Yes. Okay. So that's another incident? Yes. The history is being provided by Dad? Correct. Okay. Dad's indicating he saw a bruise on her bottom. Yes? Yes. All right. You've identified photographs where there was a bruise on Hannah's bottom? Yes. Okay. You told the jury that based on your training, education, and experience, you believe that to be a suspicious bruise? Yes. And Hannah has vocalized that she was not <coughs> whooped, assaulted, traumatized, but that she fell on step. Um, yes, so patient said she fell on a step. Let's move to the next thing. Dad reports yesterday he picked up, he picked patient up from Lindsay at 7 o'clock. Lindsay reported to Dad that at 4 p.m. patient was standing on a ride on train. And okay. Lindsay told her to get down. And patient fell striking her left eye on the handlebar. Right? So, Yes, can I just ask you to slide your finger down a little bit because you're covering up part of that. I know you're not reading from it. I'm worried I'm going to lose my spot. Sure, so, sure. Um, yeah. do, you, do you need to do that again? No, no, that's, right. that's, totally, that's totally fine. I'll take that finger yes. off and we can go from there. So, okay, sure. Again, there's another incident that, that's described. Yes? Um, yeah, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm just going to read that one more time. Just, yes. I could use a sip of water or
Okay. Good. So we're describing another event. Yes. The story is dad. Yes. Dad refers to this incident about the toy train and falling from it. Correct? Yes. Yes. And there's a, a, a an indication that Lindsay had told dad about. That was his source of information. Uh, yes, correct. And when dad goes on to describe the injuries from that fall, that's part of the history as well, correct? Yes. Which I think starts there. Yes. Dad reports the patient's eye had a cut and a bruise under the eye and the lid. Correct. Dad reports no other bruising was noticed on her head other than under her chin from the other day. Correct. So Dad, again, is articulating a history, correct? Yes. A history to the social worker. Correct. The social worker's been trained to receive these accurate reports that doctors rely on. Yes. Yes? C yes. And, and, and Dad has observed and been made aware of uh, Hannah's injury to her eye and, and had a cut and a bruise on, under the eye and the lid. Correct. So we have two or three incidents where Dad is explaining that he knew about some injuries to Hannah and then he was articulating them to the historian. Correct. Right? Dad goes on to, to, to provide in this history that's been relied upon by doctors. Here. Dad reports no concerns with Lindsay. and states she used to be a preschool teacher. Dad states patient has never made any comments about Lindsay hurting her when he, was, he has asked about her injuries that have happened to her house. That's part of the history. Correct. It came mm -hmm. from Dad. Yes. And not only from Dad, but from Lindsay herself. Um, so well, Dad. Dad Hannah herself. Okay, okay. Correct. Um, it, it, it doesn't come from Hannah herself, but it comes from Dad reporting what Hannah told her. Right. Oh, told him, yes. Okay. So in a way, it's, it's, it's Hannah vocalizing through her father. Well, I... I it, Especially, right, a, a, I don't necessarily think, say it that way. I, I am always clear who the historian is and where the history is coming from, so I wouldn't go that far. I would say, uh, as reported by Dad, the history told to him. If I got the history directly from a person, then I would say that is the history from that person. And you had all of this history at the time you wrote your report? Correct. And did your findings? Yes. Okay. Yet Dad's explanation of non-accidental bruising is not at all mentioned in your report. I'm sorry, Dad's? Dad and, and Hannah's explanation of bruising and injuries to her body are not even mentioned in your report that you have there that you, in the letter, right? Cor correct. Okay. And it's not in your note. Uh, um, I'd have to look at my note. You can look at your note. Uh, I think you have my note. I will give you that. State Exhibit 39. <laughs> Thank you. And so if I can, I would say um, that in, a, um, in the big picture, sort of, of what I am presenting before, here. Before you explain it, yes. is it, my question to you was, that is not in your note. Yeah, yes, but we can definitely agree to that. Yes. Okay. And that's where I'm going to leave. Yes. Okay. 
move on to another topic about the history. And that is, histories are about self-reporting. Correct? A history from a person, yes. if you're saying it that way, would be self-reporting, right. yes. A history taken from an individual, yes. Right. The history here was taken from Dad. Yes. And he was self-reporting, providing information from him. Correct. About injuries and bruises and hands condition. Yes. Okay. And the problem with that is, as you mentioned in your opinion letter, you've never had contact with Dad. Yes. You don't know if he's credible or not credible. Well, I would say even if I had, um, even if I had contact with him, I don't know that I would be in a position to say whether he's credible or not credible. You cannot tell this jury that because you've never met him, you can't offer a basis to know whether or not his reporting is credible or not. Right, and I would just say, but even if I had, I don't think that I could make the judgment that he is a credible person or he is not a credible person just by taking a history from him. You don't know whether or not he provided accurate information or not. That is correct, yes. Well, and again, the same would be true even if he gave it directly to me. Because you weren't there. No, that's not what I'm saying. So if Dad gave me the history that he gives me, um, I wouldn't be able to stand here and tell you. I could tell you these are the words that came out of his mouth, um, but when anybody gives me a history, um, um, I record that history. Um, uh, and, and, and of course, histories are relied upon, but that's not the same as saying, well, I can tell that this person is credible, or I can tell that this person is not credible. Right. Whether you meet them or not. Yeah. You can't, and whether you meet him or not, you can't say whether or not he's credible, he provides accurate information, or that he knows all the information. Correct. Yes. But at the same time, it's the tool you have, and it's the tool medicine uses, these histories. To a degree, yes. Okay. To a degree. We can agree that there's, that, that nowhere in the history that was provided there did Dad discuss the three weeks of unexplained headaches that he had. Um, I don't think that is in there. <coughs> yes, correct. In fact, and in fact, it's nowhere in the Children's Hospital medical records at all? Is it? Not that I remember. Okay. Is it in the EMS records? Yes, I think it's it, either I would say EMS or Fort Hamilton. Um, but, but if you say it's in the EMS records, then yes, probably. I'm just, no, I don't. I, I was asking you right. to, about your recollection. Right. One of the two. It's in one of the two. Um, was there anything in the Forest Hills pediatrics records that any medical conditions or the like that are contained in her pediatric file that was not represented in history? Um, in other words, are you, let me just clarify, are you asking is there a diagnosis or a medical condition in there that dad did not provide? It wasn't provided at all. By dad or? By dad or any other relative or anybody who supplied the history to the social worker. Um, well, to be fair, um, I'm not sure exactly how much Ms. Kitzmiller asked those questions. Like, like, for example, you know, asking, um, tell me about any past medical history or being more specific. So I don't know that Dad would have known to, to, to answer a question that wasn't asked that way. Okay. I'm going to read you a sentence and you tell me if you agree with it. A medical evaluation for any suspected child abuse victim includes a complete medical history, review of systems, family history, physical examination, and appropriate studies to exclude other medical conditions. Yes. Okay. And, and you agree with that? Do you know that you wrote that sentence? <laughs> Thank Sound you. Like? It sounds good. Okay. I didn't know I wrote that. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> you made my day. <laughs> well, I, I think I made your day because I bought a book that you wrote a chapter in and you your royalties. Mm -hmm. it. So. No royalties. No royalties. No royalties. Yes, I got actually a copy of the book. That was my royalty. Okay, well, I did too. Yes. <laughs>
could have I could have saved him, saved you the cost. I should have. All right, but I guess the point then is is that a medical history is different than a family history, right? Well. It, Dep yes, I mean, when we say medical history, that usually encompasses the HPI or um, history of present illness. Past medical history, which usually is just that person, family history, which are family, people, medications, allergies, things like that. Yes. So, so when you were saying, well, to be fair to the social worker, they might not have known to ask. Correct. You're saying that in these abuse cases, they need to ask about medical histories. Yes, and to be fair, that book is not written for social workers per se. Um, it's geared towards doctors who, when I talked about the history of present illness, past medical history, family history, that is for a medical personnel. So doctor, nurse practitioner, physician's assistant asking those questions. Right. The, the, the problem with making excuses for the social worker is that you've said you, you and other physicians have received and relied on this history that might have been done improperly by the social worker. Well, I can clarify that because when we say history, we're talking about sort of history of the event or history of present illness. I wouldn't rely on a non-medical uh, person to take a family history or to take a past medical history because she doesn't have that training. And so we're, when encompassing history so broadly um, can make it confusing. talk to you about the accuracy of this history. And then we'll move on to the next paragraph, which is the exam. Okay. So let's start here. Report from outside hospital was that patient fell yesterday and hit her eye on the handlebar of a ride on toy. Stop. Do you know whether or not that to be accurate or not? The, the the fact that it was reported from the outside hospital or the fact that it the the fall the fact that it happened um i mean it is reported from the outside hospital and then miss <coughs> kitz miller reports it again via dad that she fell yesterday okay. and were you aware that the were you aware what were you aware of the fact that hannah not only fell and hit her eye on the toy but also impacted her head on a concrete floor. I had heard that history as well, yes. Okay. I was aware of that. That is not in this history. The concrete floor one. Um, no, it is not. Okay. How about... Dad, let's go to the stay on the toy. Dad reports the, reports, reports the toy is only about 15 inches high. Do you know that to be true or not? I know that that is what's written there. Of course, without doing a scene investigation, I wouldn't be able to say that that is true or not. I think I'm going to characterize this right. If there was evidence that a detective actually measured the toy and it was eight inches, eight inches tall, the information in the history would be incorrect. Um, um, y yes, I mean, Dad obviously was giving that number and it was written down. So yes, 15 would certainly be greater than 8. Dad reports he and patient went to Walmart and then home. Again, for context, that would have been March 7th, the day before Correct. injuries. Correct. Do you know that to be true? I, again, I know that, that that is what Dad is reporting to Ms. Kitzmiller. Okay, and this is the stuff that the physicians rely upon, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And if there, and I'll submit to you that if a detective went out to Walmart, looked at the, the video, and Dad hadn't gone mm -hmm. to Walmart, what's in that report would be incorrect. Well, that part of it, yes. Okay. Dad states less than three minutes later, Lindsay called him to say that the patient collapsed. Now we're talking about March 8th in the morning. Yes. Do you know whether or not that three-minute span is correct or incorrect? I, I don't know. Okay. In the course of your work on this case, were you supplied with hard records like um, cell phone records, texts, phone logs to evaluate Dad's assertion in this history about the three less than three-minute period? I was not. So you don't know if that's true or not? Correct. <laughs> Thank you. 
where the statement here says, when dad arrived, the patient was on a couch in the heated garage. Do you know that to be true or not? I don't. Again, just that is what dad is reporting. If there was evidence that the dad actually came into the home and then carried Hannah into the garage and put her on the couch, that would be different than that history, correct? Yes. I'm trying to organize this around your opinion. So let's let's move from the second paragraph and go to the exam now. And I and I will pro, I'm going to I'm going to summarize what I believe you identify in your global exam. And I know it includes other doctors besides you. And I might say it wrong. And feel free to free to correct me. Okay. But you identify the bruises that you've talked about here today, correct? Correct. All right. You talk about the the finding of moderate to severe renal hemorrhages. Yes. In both eyes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. You talk about the subdural hematoma that resulted in mass effect that caused the brain to shift and then the herniation. Yes? Um, yes. And brain swelling. Yes. Let's, let me talk to you about the bruises real quick. I understood your direct testimony to include opinion testimony about the location and pattern of bruises on, on, on Hannah's body and based on your training, education, and experience that those locations and, 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 the, and the pattern allowed you to say or to conclude or find non-accidental non -accidental trauma with respect to those injuries. Is that correct? And I would say for some of, I testified uh, to, you did. to that for some of the bruises, but not all of the bruises, yes. Correct. In fact, you were very specific. Yes. Uh, left forehead, shin, and the knees, less worrisome or not worrisome, chin, left ear, interior chest, flanks, upper arms, and buttock concern. Yes, and I think I clarified that the buttock bruise uh, or buttock bruises in general can come from a child sort of falling on something. And I um, testified that the eye uh, bruise, although the eye is a um, sort of recessed part of the eye, um, would not be injured from a fall, um, with the exception of if the child fell on an object that was around the shape or size of the eye socket. And okay. so the history of falling onto a handlebar, for example, could explain that, that eye bruising. So that's sort of a perfect example right. of what I was testifying to in general right. about an eye. And that, that, that's what you're saying, you believe you said on direct? Yes. Okay. And that's a substantial elaboration, correct? No, what I'm saying is... You're elaborating is on, on, on the bruises. I mean, you're elaborating on based... These are your findings, and this is... I'm, I'm elaborating on that. Are you, are you saying I'm elaborating on my testimony, my direct testimony? No, I'm just yes. saying that you, you, know, you looked at these bruises and then elaborated on them, and that, that, that constituted your finding that you just discussed, correct? Yes, I, I think I understand what you're well, saying. And there's yes. a reason I'm asking like that, and, and I'm not trying to confuse you. It was very detailed. Yeah, so my direct testimony about the bruises, I would say yes, was very detailed. Now take a look at your opinion letter. Nowhere in your, I submit to you, take a look at it, mm -hmm. but the question is going to be, nowhere in that opinion letter do you offer an opinion about patterns and locations of bruises being concerning for probable non-accidental injuries. Well, and as I was um, starting to testify to before, sort of in a, in, a, in a global sense of talking about everything, you know, without making a letter like this, which I easily could, you know, five or six um, pages, 
um, but encompassing all of those things, which I suspect when I write a letter like this, that I will be given the opportunity to testify what what's wi within this um, letter in more detail within a court proceeding. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're saying is, yes, you agree with me, that nowhere in your opinion letter does it express any commentary at all about the location and pattern of bruising being probable not <coughs> It's not in there. Well, and again, because Is I... It in there or not? The, the globally, what I testified to on direct about those specific things is encompassed within my letter. It's just in a very big encompassing term, which I can find in the letter and point that out to you if you would Where like. Where do you discuss patterns of bruises in your letter? That's what I'm saying. That is the elaboration part, which I assume I am going to be given the opportunity to elaborate on in court. So I don't have to go through every single bruise and sort of every single indication. Um, but when I say uh, for... Let's, let's, I mean, I'm focusing on a specific issue. It's a legal issue. So I just, I just want you to be direct. Sure. Do you mention pattern of bruises in your letter? Is there one sentence? So yes, if you're if we're going to get that specific, no, there is no indication of the word pattern. Is there any indication in your opinion letter about the location of bruises as a constellation being concerned? It's not in there. It's not in there, correct. It wasn't pattern and location aren't in your notes, in the note, in your medical records, correct? Correct. Okay. So so and, I, and, and, and thank you for, for your honest testimony. What you're saying is that um, you were under the belief that you could come to court and testify about those things, and you didn't have to put in your letter or your note to give the other side notice about what your opinions were. Well, but my but but boy, we could be here all month if we got down to specific words like pattern and location, because to me the encompassing. Um, sentence about, um, and I, I do want to read a, a sentence because I want to make sure that that um, that that certainly, you know, that I get it that I get it right. Um, um, you know, the fact that I am making the diagnosis um, of physical abuse is encompassing it in that the history. Um, that the history um, that um, the presentation is not consistent Where with the his oh I'm, I'm so sorry I am in states exhibit 39 on the bottom in my impression so it's the bottom of page 154 Yes, no, I, yeah, right. So the presentation is not consistent with the history of a fall yesterday or even with the history of multiple falls this week. So if I started getting into every specific term and indication, you know, the notes would be way too long. Okay. Um, I, you know, the, and, and, and my understanding, since you brought up the term sort of legal in here, is that in writing a, an, an opinion letter like this, that I do not have to say everything that I am going to say in court. So if I'm asked a question, I may answer it in a way, but it is still encompassed within my report. Well, thank you for that. We can agree your opinions about what you need to do and what the law's requirements are might be something different. You don't know what the law is about notice and scope of opinion matters. Well, now, I... Do you? You're not, are you a lawyer? I'm no, I don't okay. know the law, but I know what I'm told by lawyers about right. what my product should look like. Right. So and I will say it that way. I know what I've been told by lawyers. And you would agree with me that based on three or four pages of notes that were in the 5,000 pages of medical records, and based on your opinion letter that you provided to me, where none of them say pattern of bruises is, is problematic for non-accidental trauma, and location of bruises is problematic for more probable non-accidental trauma, no lawyer like me would be on notice that that was an opinion that you would bring to court today. The Since opinion... Those words since, since those words weren't even present. Sure, the opinion is still the... Objection, Your Honor, may we approach on this? Let's approach.
I think we talked about your opinion letter and going down paragraph, paragraph by paragraph is the way to organize. So let's let's move to the one, two, third paragraph, which is the exam. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, right. yes. And I, I want to make sure that you, you feel comfortable with talking about it, so um, let me know. Um, you list bruises on the face, ear, head, chest, bilateral flanks, butt, buttock, and upper extremities, and bilateral lower extremities, correct? Yes. Because that's what you saw. At your, I mean, you saw, it, you saw it in the photographs, you said. You saw those bruises in the photographs. Yes, ma'am. And on my examination, yes. Yeah, that was, that's the second question. Okay, sorry. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Yes, and on my examination. So yes, in that first sentence or sentences, um, sentence, I guess I am just listing what I saw. Yes. All right. And it's fair to say that you did not list a large bruise to the back of Hannah's head, correct? I did not. Yes, I did not list that. Right. That is correct. And. Did you have contact with uh, Dr. Dean, the pathologist in this case? Um, yes, I'm sure we had contact. I certainly reviewed her report. Okay. Um, whether we had contact after that or not, unfortunately, we talk about many cases. So. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, can we agree that Dr. Dean, upon her um, autopsy examination, uh, uncovered a really large bruise to the back of Hans' head. Um, yes, and I would like to point out on that autopsy examination that was um, discovered after shaving the hair. Okay. Yes. All right. And, and this is State Exhibit 76. This would be the particular bruise we're talking about right here, correct? Um, yes. All right. Correct. And and not the you missed that bruise. Well, it would have been missed unless we shaved her hair, like was done in the autopsy. And, and she was in the care of Children's Hospital from March 8th until her death on the 18th. Correct, yes. It wasn't seen by any, any physician at all, no nurse, no, no staff, no nobody. Well, and again, I would say the only way we would have noted that would be by shaving her hair. So the answer is no? Correct. And you, you wouldn't characterize state... Exhibit 76 as an insignificant injury. Um, that was a double negative. Let me think about that. Okay, no, I'll, write, I'll ask a better question. Yeah, sure. We can agree that, that the, the bruise that I just showed you is a significant injury in a subdural hematoma, brain swelling, brain herniation case. Um, so if you're saying significant in the terms of like uh, a medically significant, yeah, then, I, sorry, then I would say no, that is not a medically uh, significant finding. So the bruise on the back of her head uh, would be similar to the bruise on her forehead, which would be similar to a bruise on any child's forehead, which is rarely a medically significant uh, medically concerning, life-threatening type of injury. So, no, I would say any bruise on a child, I note, and, and, and certainly a bruise on the back of the head is not one that I would expect um, uh, unless there was a specific history to account for it, um, uh, as opposed to like a bruise on the front of the head because okay. kids are constantly bonking them. But if you're asking if that is a medically significant finding, then no, I would say the answer is no. All right. Are you aware that Dr. Dean found that the bruise in the back of the head actually went through the scalp and into the lower tissue? So that then is a more significant finding. And she has the ability, obviously, to retract back the scalp and look deeper. So that finding now is significant. So if that is related to the bruise on the head, now that's a different question, and then I would say yes, then that is more significant of a finding medically, because the bruise is not only on the surface, like they often are, but clearly goes deeper. And are you aware of the fact that the bruise on the front of the head didn't have a similar finding underneath the skin? <laughs> 
yeah, I am aware of that, and of course, we wouldn't know that. And your first question was, you know, is this finding on the back of the back of the head significant? You and I wouldn't know that unless we had the ability to retract the scalp the way that the deputy coroner did. Your findings from the third paragraph of your opinion letter do not include any findings with respect to internal brain hemorrhaging? Um, well, they do. We're still talking about the third paragraph? That's where you have your exam findings. Yes. Um, internal brain hemorrhaging, I do talk about that in the CAT scan results, which would be the only way that I would know that there would be internal hemorrhaging inside of the brain. Okay. Well, you, you talk about cerebral swelling. Yes. That's brain swelling. Yes. You talk about cerebral herniation. Yes. Okay. That's the brain herniating into space that it's not supposed to be in. Correct. Yes. Okay. You talk about hypoxia. Yes. That's lack of oxygen to the brain. Yes. And then you talk about, and I can't say that word, you'll have to say that word. Ischemia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's lack of blood flow to the brain. Correct, All yes. Right? But there's not a mention of internal hemorrhaging within the brain, is there? Uh, so, so the very first part of the CT, so maybe we weren't understanding each other, um, talks about large subdural hematoma or bleed. So that is a bleed that people would say is within the brain, but not within the brain matter itself, which is more of sort of an internal hemorrhage. So right, yes, well, that's correct. When you gave your description of anatomy, you talked about three layers. Yes. All right, and, and the first layer is? The dura. The dura? Yes. And then the arachnoid? Yes. And then there's another layer? The, uh, the pia mater. Okay, mm -hmm. and so when you talk about subdural hematoma, you're talking about blood beneath the hematoma. You mean beneath the dura? I mean, yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> yes. Beneath, beneath the dura. Correct. Right. Yes. Above the arachnoid membrane. Correct. And, in, in, and above another membrane. The pia. Correct. And outside the brain tissue itself. Correct. Yes. <laughs> but some people would say that's within the brain, but just not within the brain tissue, which I know sounds like a minor point. It's within the skull, but not within the brain tissue. Yes, but people would, yes, and, and I'm agreeing with you, I'm just saying people often call that a brain bleed, even though that's why semantics are very important if you're right. talking about a brain bleed or a brain matter bleed. Right. But sometimes people leave that off and just call that a brain bleed. But under no circumstances is the dura or the subdural space within the brain matter itself. It's not within the brain matter itself, correct, but it is part of the brain. It's part or some people might say part of the skull. Well, it's not part of the skull, but some people would say it's part of the brain. And again, we, we could go round and round. I'm just telling you how these terms are sort of used in the medical field. How about this? There was no hemorrhaging in the brain matter. I think we've established that. We have established that. And, we, and also your report no, indicates no injury to the brain stem itself. Uh, to, that is correct, yes. And there's no injury to the cervical spine or the tissue surrounding the cervical spine. Uh, yeah, I do not put that in my report. That's correct, yes. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Okay. And in that paragraph, you talk about um, the falling off the train, and you, and, and, you, and, 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 and you assess whether or not the injuries that Hannah presented with to the EMS and to the Fort Hamilton Hughes and to the Children's Hospital, whether or not they could potentially relate back to the train incident, the conclusion is no. And again... Is that, let me just answer my yes. Well, the, the answer is yes, but I want to make sure that it's not so much the train, but it's also... Yes, it's the train and it's also the timing, yes. We'll get to the timing So in a train incident. So and I agree you make a train yes. opinion and a timing opinion. Correct. But yes. I'm just talking about the train right Okay, now. yes. And, the, and, there's, and, and, and you understand from the history that the train incident happened the day before at 4 o'clock, yes. according to the history. According to the All history, right. correct. And, you're, and, and the focus, and because, because that incident had been reported, you're focusing on that to see whether or not it could potentially be the cause of her fatal injuries. Correct. Okay. Yes. But it doesn't address any potential physical trauma that occurred on the night of the 7th or into the 8th or in the morning of the 8th, the early morning, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay.
And since you brought up timing, we'll get into timing. In, in, in providing an opinion about, I'm going to close my eyes and try to think of a way to say this right. In that paragraph, that fourth, one, two, three, fourth paragraph, that's where you offer the, the, the opinion about timing, correct? Yes, fourth okay. paragraph, yes. Mm -hmm. right. and, and I'm going to try and characterize your opinion. And it is that the time from her injury to the <coughs> say it again, the time from the injury to the onset of symptoms would be a short period of time. Um, um, Yes, shortly after the injury. So yes, a short period of time. All right. Yes. And again, you, you, short period of time is not a measurement of time. <laughs> it is not. That is correct. Okay. And the reason it's not a measurement of time is because medical science cannot impose actual time values. Well, yeah, I thought you were going to go someplace else. I was going to say, um, similar to how I testified to, uh, to another question, is that in order to really answer that accurately, you would have to do the research, which we would never fathom doing that type of research. So because of that, mm -hmm. units of time cannot be used in testimony or in literature or in medical science. In a case like this, you could certainly, I don't want to make that a global statement about all of medical science, but in a case like this where you can't do, uh, you, you know, for example, in research done in the time from a person who has a stroke to when they get therapy, um, they have said that, you know, there's a golden hour um, that, you know, you want to get to therapy within an hour. And so clearly from research on actual patients who are having a stroke, they noted that people who got that therapy within an hour did better than others. Um, you know, this is not the type of um, prospective research that you would want to do by causing injury in children in a research setting and, and, and sort of seeing when they get symptoms. So in this area, we don't give a time. All right. So you, again, wouldn't, you wouldn't agree with a look back period of 24 hours? I'm, I'm sorry, a look back from, from onset of symptoms to injury, you would, would you disagree with a look back period of 24 hours? Yeah, I would say 24 hours is not shortly. Okay. Right. Yes. How about hours? Uh, um, in, when I say shortly, I am also not indicating hours. How about relatively immediately? Relatively immediately probably kind of sounds like shortly, I guess. It sounds a little bit... Would you agree with that, sir? relatively immediately certainly could encompass shortly um, right. I, I would say immediately and shortly are, 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 are different but I would say you know shortly can go probably all the way to immediately um, maybe even a compass immediately okay. um, but I think shortly I would say when I give the term shortly I can tell you what I mean is I am being conservative so I can't rule out immediately um, but I feel that I also can't be th that specific to say immediately that I am more conservative in my word in using shortly. And we have established, I don't mean to tread over things, but I want to make certain we have, and that is that you have not been supplied with hard time frame evidence in this case for you to take your opinion and match it to the time frames presented in the evidence in this case. Um, and... and uh, I mean, one thing I do have are EMS records, but are you talking like cell phone data yeah. and other things like that? Correct. I do have EMS records, um, so I know the timing of the, Hannah's progression of her vital signs, so that I do have, and that forms, um, uh, you know, and that is important in my testimony. But you are correct, I don't have anybody's cell phone data right. or any other types right. of records. And you do talk about progression in your opinion letter, correct? Yes. But you do not talk about vital signs in your opinion letter. Correct. And you do not talk about vital signs in your note. Uh, in my medical record note? Yes. Correct. Or any other document that I would have the access to see. Correct.
Can I approach? You may. Thank you. I'm going to show you um, States 91. And I have I have the records up here so I can I can move away. Okay. And these are the Forest Hills records, correct? They are, yes. All right. And, 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 and you don't know when you reviewed them, but it was certainly recently. Yes. And, and, and you said that you made no findings of medical significance. Um, yeah, yes, related to why we're here today. Correct. Okay. She did have hepatitis C. Um, I, she was exposed to hepatitis C. Um, I don't know if there was ever testing done. Um, but well, if you provide me with that, I would I would say that would be consistent with being exposed well, to hepatitis we'll, we'll go to the we'll go to the record that I think suggests the diagnosis, then we'll talk about the testing set. Sure. Okay. All right. So, and it might be the the, the note from one twelve eighteen. Do you have that? Well, or yes. Or it I, might be easier for me to I, find it for you. That's fine. I have one. Yes, I have one twelve eighteen. Okay. Yes, it's on. It happens to be the first one. And you see <laughs> how the 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 the, the physician's records are bold-faced. Yes. It says problem list. Uh, yes, and I do see that it, right, it says hepatitis C infection, and the onset date is 9-23-15, which would be, um, Hannah would have been about nine months of age. So, yes, I did not see a um, test of hepatitis C, but again, I would say that if it is there, if, if you say it is there, then I would believe that to be true. Well, it does also say that her hepatitis C infection was a chronic one, correct? I'm sorry, it was chronic? Right. In that note that you were just looking at? Um, no, it, it actually doesn't say. It, it does. It, I mean, it says chronic up here, but that's within the list. I see. And then there's nothing written underneath it. All right. So whether or not it was chronic or acute, I we think don't know, but exactly. the onset date is, is listed in the note as beginning on 9-23-15. Correct, yes. And, and what we know about hepatitis C is that it can be transmitted from mother to child. Correct. All right. And further in that note on 1-12-2018, it indicates that the mother was a carrier of hepatitis C. Yes. Okay. And... I can proffer to you that the testing was ordered and, okay. and the, at Children's Hospital. Okay. And they don't do that. Um, you would expect that the results of that test would be in those medical records. Yes. And, and you did not see them. I don't remember seeing them. It doesn't mean that I didn't come across it at some point, right. and I just don't remember them. Um, but I would certainly agree with you if she was hepatitis C positive, even just knowing the fact that mom is a carrier. Okay. The hepatitis C information was not supplied by the father or anybody in the medical history? Um, no, apparently not. Okay. And the word hepatitis doesn't appear once in the 4,500 or 5,000 pages of Children's Hospital? Probably not. Okay. And, and do you understand hepatitis C to be a blood infection? Um, it is infection that is transmitted from the blood, but it is a liver infection. That infects the liver? Uh, it, it's transmitted through blood, um, but then it infects the liver. Correct. Right. So it's not, we wouldn't categorize that as a blood infection. And it's a difficult illness to diagnose? Um, you mean from testing or just? No, not from testing. From, from just a person walking around the streets knowing that they are infected with hepatitis C. Yes, there are many people infected who do not know it. That's correct. Right. And, and one of the primary ways a person learns that they have hepatitis C is from bruising. Unexplained, easy bruising. Um, yeah, that, that is true, but I need to say something about that, though. In your we made mention we made mention of the book um, report book chapter that you wrote. Mm -hmm. It was talk the the chapter of the book was called 
And I have a copy if you want to take a look at it. Would it help? Sure. Okay. Yeah, since I didn't remember that I wrote that sentence, <laughs> okay. I had better take you a look. You said you wrote 20, right? Uh, that's something. Yeah, 20, yeah, something like that. I'm going to label it L. L. Okay. I have a copy. It's not very long, and I'm not going to ask you too many questions about it. But um, the book, the book chapter is called "Skin Conditions Confused with Child Abuse." Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And that's your name below as the co-author. Yes, it is. All right. And when I read to you the <coughs> sentence about whether or not you agreed with it, it was the second sentence from that book uh, chapter that you wrote, the medical evaluation for any suspected child abuse victim includes a complete medical history, review of system systems, family history, physical examination, and appropriate studies to exclude other medical conditions. Yes. All right. And you were concerned in this book of medical conditions that would allow for bruising that was identified as child abuse, but with some innocent medical condition that the patient had. Correct. Yes. All right. And can we agree that you list out the categories of conditions that in the literature and your experience um, should be evaluated by the child abuse investigator to rule out accidental bruising? And I'm sorry, I missed a word. You said the categories? Is that what you said? Well, I mean, oh. I, I, the way I've read this is mm -hmm. you talk about, like on that first page, you have... Mm -hmm a whole piece on congenital conditions that need to be evaluated. Oh, I, I'm saying, so, so the child abuse pediatrician must must consider all of these categories. Yes, I see what you're Before saying. Before they diagnose yes. bruising as abuse. That is correct, yes. Dermato dermatological conditions on the next page. Yes. Hypersensitivity syndromes on the next page. Yes. If I go too fast, tell me. No. Nope, Vasculitic good. disorders. Yes. Okay. Uh, connective tissue disorders. Yes. Hematological conditions. Yes. And cultural practices on maybe page 280. Yes. Okay. And oncologic conditions to be right. missed. And and hepatitis C is fair to put in the in the hermatological condition list. Um. Did I say her? You did. Hematologic, Hematologic. condition. Um, and so, um, so. You have to answer my question first. It's fair to put it in that list. Um, not necessarily. No. Conditionally, yes. Um, no. Okay. No, because uh, you're asking a medical question, and you need the whole medical picture for me to answer it accurately. Okay. How about this? In that same, in that same column about hematological conditions. Yes. Last sentence on the page two seventy eight. You say some medications and viral infections can cause platelet disorders and should be explored in the history. Yes. You um, say that. Yes, I say that, but the key word there is platelet disorders, which was evaluated in Hannah. Right. Um, is hepatitis C a viral infection? Hepatitis C is a viral infection, yes. Is when, when somebody with hepatitis C can suffer from diminished platelets? Yes? No. Um, you're lumping a lot of things together. Yes, platelet disorders is one. The thing about hepatitis C is it affects the liver. What is made in the liver are clotting uh, factors. So right. we test those with two tests, PT, PTT, prothrombin time, and um, um, what, whatever they're called, PT and PTT. Hannah's values were not 
elevated to the point where it would cause bruising. So whether she had hepatitis or not doesn't make a difference when we're talking about bruising unless those values were abnormal. You're talking about the platelet values. I'm not talking about platelets. That is different. Platelets are what is in your blood um, that when you get a cut or you get a bleed somewhere, the platelets come and right. for back of, lack of a better sort of term, they kind of like stop the bleeding. They're sticky little things. They clot. They help to clot. Also involved in that clotting are factors that, they're, they're factors, they're just called factors and there are numbers to them that, um, that, that um, also are involved in stopping bleeding. Um, and those are made, uh, or the liver is involved in sort of making these factors. So a person with significant liver disease, jaundice, stools are white, the eyes are white, their, plate, their clotting factors will go down and they will bruise more easily. But if those numbers are normal, it doesn't matter if you've had hepatitis C for nine months or 90 years. If your values are normal, you're not going to bruise more easily. So you can't say hepatitis, everybody with hepatitis bruises. So you are right that, that, if some, that a symptom of hepatitis C can be easy bruising, but you're missing the middle step right. of your factors will be decreased. And Hannah's factors were checked at Fort Hamilton and at Cincinnati Children's, and they were not reduced to the level that would cause bruising. So I did evaluate that part of it without even caring or knowing if, hep if she had hepatitis C, because it was irrelevant at that point. You didn't know it until right here. Well, no, that, well, it, like I said, I presumed that she could have had it. I don't see a positive test for hepatitis C. I see that the physician put it in her notes. But again, it, it is irrelevant to the bruising question. Obviously, it's important for Hannah and her caregivers to know if she has hepatitis C because it needs to be evaluated. But in the question that you're asking about bruising, <coughs> it doesn't matter. The pediatric records from Forest Hills indicate an onset date. Yes? I'm not saying that it's wrong. All I'm saying is I never saw the test. And I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm just saying that I never saw it. So we can say that she has hepatitis C. I would expect that that test would be positive. It didn't. It did not cause the bruising because the middle part, the, the, the sort of medical piece that is very important to your line of questioning, those were not reduced to the point where they would have caused bruising. You do not offer an opinion in your testimony regarding the perpetrator of fatal and non-fatal injuries. I'm meaning the perpetrator, the, the person. Perpetrator. That is correct, yes. Did you supply information to the detectives for their interviews in this case? I'm sorry, did I supply? I the, forgot the detectives who worked on this case with information about Hannah's condition and your opinions? Um, yes, I would have told them exactly what is in my note. Did yes. you tell them that on March the 8th, 2018? Maybe on that date, maybe soon after that date. I couldn't tell you when. You don't know. Well, it wouldn't have been yesterday, but it certainly would have been, you know, soon after March 8th, if not on March 8th. Okay. And you don't have a specific recollection of Mar on March 8th or March 9th, a specific recollection of supplying medical opinions to them, do you? I, I do not, no. Okay. And it's not in, in, your, it's not in your note? Well, days. it wouldn't be because my note is a medical consultation. It wouldn't include the detectives okay. or children's services or anybody. Well, my else. point, not in your opinion letter, not in the note, not in any records, does it indicate that you supply the detectives with information at all, let alone on March 8th, March 9th? That's correct, yes. Okay. But you, you were present on the March 13th child abuse team evaluation of this case? Um, I most likely was, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but the only reason I wouldn't be would be if I was out of town or if I was testifying. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I think that I'm done, but I just want to make sure that I'm not. Okay, Please, and uh, leave your 